Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the compatibility between the pollen and the pistil. Now what do we mean by compatibility? Now one thing to be noted here is that it is not that Fertilization can take place just between any two plants. It is not that the pollen grains from any plant can just fertilize the egg of some other plant. So that is not the case because there is a lot of things involved. For example, the gene of both the plants might not be compatible with each other. So fertilization cannot take place. So there has to be a compatibility check whether fertilization can happen between these male gametes and the female gamete or not. So who does that compatibility check? So what do we mean when we say something is compatible and something is incompatible? So compatible and incompatible are the two words. So what is it when we say compatible? It means that the right type of pollen landed on the stigma receptive to that pollen. That means the right type of pollen when it lands on the stigma and the stigma, the job of stigma is to receive pollen. So that means the pollen which has landed on the stigma, the stigma is to receive that type of pollen only. That means this is compatible. So the pollen pistil interaction is compatible. Incompatible means the wrong type of pollen has landed on the stigma. A stigma is nothing but a part of the pistil. If you look at the structure of the pistil, this is how it looks like. The stigma followed by the stalk followed by the swollen oval. So this is the stigma and the pollen grains, they actually falls on this stigma. So the stigma, so the decision has to be taken here, whether it is compatible or not compatible. Now, the question is who decides if the pollen is the right one or not? Who has to decide that? Obviously, the pistil has to decide because the pollen is falling on this pistil. So, the pistil has to decide whether entry needs to be given to the pollen or not. So, pistil has the ability to recognize the pollen. So, what kind of ability does the pistil have? We will see that very soon. So, let us try to understand what kind of interaction take place between the pollen and the pistil if they are compatible with each other. So, first let us look at the compatible scenario. So, in the compatible scenario, what will happen? If you see here, the pollens landed on the stigma. The stigma is trying to recognize the pollen. They said that, well, yes, correct. So, these are the right type of pollen. So, the pistil will accept the pollen. So, acceptance will be there if they are compatible. Now what happens once the pollens are accepted, then the pollen tube formation takes place. Now, just go back and try to remember who, are, who is involved in the formation of pollen tube. Now, when the pollen grain falls on the stigma, the pollen grains start germinating there. Now, when they germinate, the pollen tube is formed through one of the germ pores. You remember the structure of the pollen grain, each pollen grain will have an enzyme outside. And in some fixed places of the enzyme, you will have germ pores where there will be no sporopollen. So through those germ pores, they will start the formation of the pollen tube. And who helps in the formation of the pollen, the pollen tube? You remember the two cells which were formed, vegetative cell and the generative cell. So the vegetative cell helps in the formation of pollen tube. That is why they are also called tube cell. Whereas the generative cell will help in the formation of the male gametes. Right? So with all these, the pollen tube formation will start taking place. Now this pollen tube will grow through the tissues of the stigma and the style. So this portion is tight. And finally, it will reach the ovary. So this tube is quite long so that it can reach from stigma till the ovary. Now the question is, when are the pollen grains produced? Now the pollen grains, production of pollen grains we have already discussed. So the pollen grains can be produced either in the two cell stage or in the three cell stage. So that depends. In some plants it is produced in the two cell stage. In two cell stage you have two cells, generative cell and vegetative cell. So generative cell will form the male gametes that is the sperms and the vegetative cell is the tube cell which helps in the growth of pollen tube. If, it, if the pollen grains are produced in the three cell stage in that case 
it is going to carry two gametes from the very beginning because in this case you have uh, one vegetative cell inside that you have the two gametes. So from the very beginning it will carry those two gametes. So that is how pollen grains will be there. So this pollen tube as I said it reaches the ovary. Pollen grains will move into the pollen tube whether they are produced during the two cell stage or three cell stage irrespective of that it will move into the pollen tube. Now the question is how this pollen tube will enter inside the ovary because the female gamete is located in the embryo sac which is located inside the ovule and the ovule is located inside the ovary. So the pollen tube has to enter the ovary. So how does it enter inside the ovule of the ovary? So it will enter the ovule through the micropyle end. So this is a magnified picture of this portion. So this portion has been magnified here. So if you see this is the pollen tube, the end of the pollen tube and this one is the micropylar end and this side would be the chalazal end. So here if you see this is the synergid, this one and this one, these two are the synergids. So this is the synergid and towards the bottom of the synergid you have the specialized thickened corners which are called filiform apparatus. And it is through this apparatus that the pollen tube is able to enter inside the synergy. So if you see here, here the pollen tube has actually entered. So see, this is the pollen tube. It has actually entered inside the synergy and it has released the two male gametes. This is one male gamete and this one is another male gamete. Right? So what happens is pollen tube enters a synergy through the filiform apparatus. Absolutely. And then fertilization occurs. How fertilization occurs? The male gametes are now released and there is one egg cell here, so which is a female gamete. There is another polar nuclei here, which also acts as female gamete and one fertilization will take place between these two. Another fertilization will take place between these two. So two fusion will actually occur and that is why it is called double fertilization. So this is how fertilization will take place if the pollen pistil interaction is compatible. What if the pollen pistil interaction is not compatible? So in that case the pistil will reject the pollen. As soon as the pollen comes here, the pistil will reject the pollen. So the pollen tube formation will not at all take place because the pollen grains in that case will not be able to germinate on the stigma. Now if the pollen tube itself is not formed, pollen grains will not be carried, so the pollen grains will not reach the ovary, so the male and the female gametes will not be able to meet each other, so there will be no fusion and hence no fertilization. So that is the incompatible scenario. But now the most important question is, the pistil either accepts or rejects the pollen, but based on what does it accept or reject the pollen? So how the communication exchange takes place between the pistil and the pollen? Because they cannot speak like we humans do. That okay, they, the pollen will tell that okay, I belong to this and this. And the pistol will say, oh yeah, you are the right one. So they can't speak. So how that dialogue exchange takes place between the pollen and pistol? So let us try to understand that. So pollen-pistol interaction. So whenever we talk about this, it, it involves the pollen recognition followed by promotion or inhibition of the pollen. So pollen comes to the stigma, so pollen is recognized. Now, after being recognized, the pollen is either uh, accepted, that is promotion of the pollen, or the pollen is rejected, that is inhibition of the pollen. So that is where the pollen pistil interaction story starts. This is a dynamic process. So it is not a static process, it is a dynamic process. It keeps on changing, it happens as and when needed. So now the question is how do pollen and pistil interact? That is how the dialogue exchange occurs. So now how the interaction actually take place between pollen and pistil? So as I said the dialogue exchange actually happens with the help of chemicals. So there are certain chemicals which are released by the pollen and which are recognized by the pistil and these chemicals actually help the pistil to decide whether this is the right pollen 
or or the wrong one so that is how the compatibility and incompatibility is decided so we can say that all the events which starts from the pollen deposition on stigma the moment the pollen gets deposited on the stigma let us suppose this is the stigma this is the style and this is the ovary so now since this pollen gets deposited on the stigma the pollen pistil interaction starts from here so all the events which start taking place from pollen deposition on stigma till the pollen tube enters inside the ovule so the pollen tube will be formed like this and finally it will enter inside the ovule so all the events that take place within this uh, span of time they are all referred to as pollen pistil interaction because the interaction between pollen and pistil starts from here and it continues till the male gametes are released inside the ovule so this is all about the pollen pistil interaction so now the question is how does the knowledge on pollen pistil interaction help so why do we want to know about the pollen pistil interaction because if we have a good knowledge on which pollen pistil interaction is compatible and which pollen pistil interaction is incompatible we can actually decide which pollen grains can be fertilized or can be fused with yeah, which type of egg cell so we can actually fuse or we can actually breed different varieties of plants to get some better varieties so it will help in crossing different species or genera to produce commercially superior varieties but if you are not aware of the compatibility what will happen you will just keep on doing heat and trial and that will not give you better results but if you know whether they are compatible or not you can accordingly uh, cross breed them thank you please visit www.examphio.com to watch more videos attempt a free online test get free study material Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.